Hi, I'm Adam Kolf and you're at BeachCast. In this video, we're going to talk about using Laravel Sail for Docker on WSL2. So stick around and we'll get right on that. Welcome back. As I said, in this video, we're going to be talking about Laravel Sail. Now, I've done videos in the past about you setting up Laravel on a Docker environment. And I've also set up Laravel on a WSL environment. But in this video, it's a little bit different. One of my past viewers requested that I do a video on setting up Laravel on Docker. Now, I think that person probably didn't realize that I had already done that a few years ago. But since it was a few years ago, I decided to try out something new and show the Docker setup again, but this time with a new wrinkle using Laravel Sail. In my previous video, when I set it up, there were some things that you had to take care of because of the caching directory permissions and also the uh, config and, and a lot of other places where certain permissions were needed in order to run a local development environment. And doing it in Docker was not without its limited issues. So that being said, Laravel Sail kind of takes care of that. So let's go ahead and dig right in. To get started, I'm first going to start off in the Laravel Sail documentation. Now in the documentation, in the introduction, it tells you a little bit more about what it is. Laravel Sail is a lightweight command line interface for interfacing with Laravel's default Docker development environment. It also provides a great starting point to build Laravel applications using PHP, MySQL, and Reddit without prior Docker experience. One of the things I did note, however, as I was preparing for this video, is it does state that Laravel Sail is automatically installed on all new Laravel applications. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. In my previous video, which I'll link to up above, um, I installed Laravel using Composer and just did Composer create project. And by doing that and bringing in Laravel slash Laravel, it didn't bring in sale by default. So what the documentation is referencing is installing Laravel, the example application. Now sale is in the example application. It is not there if you make the command Composer create project. So if you used uh, a composer create project, you would have to follow the command that is here, which is composer require Laravel slash sale and then hyphen hyphen dev. You would need to do that if you were not using the Laravel example application. Let me show you a little bit more of what I mean. All right, so to get started, I'm gonna go ahead and launch my installation of Ubuntu 20.04. Now I do have a WSL2 environment set up and ready, and it is running Ubuntu 20.04. And that is the command line that I just brought up, the terminal that I just brought up. So if I if I look at my present working directory, I am in slash home slash Adam Culp. Now this is on Windows, and, but yet I'm at a, in an Ubuntu command line because that is the environment that I'm running in WSL2 at the moment. If I look in that directory, I have some various other subdirectories. Projects is the one that I'm going to be working with right now. So let me go ahead and change into the projects directory. And if I list what's there, we can see that I have an example application and I also have sample site. Now the example hyphen app, it was installed using the Laravel installation of example app. The sample site, was one that I installed using Composer to create a new project. If I, if I go into sample site and we look at the files there, we can see that it's just a standard uh, Laravel uh, application install by using Composer and installing Laravel slash Laravel. Uh, if, I, if I do a list then of the vendor directory vendor and go into bin and we see what's there, we see I don't have sale here. That being said, I'm not able to issue Laravel sale commands. Now, so I would need to install Laravel sale in this project. And to do that, I would issue the command composer require Laravel slash sale and then hyphen hyphen dev. However, if I go to the other project, go to the example app 
and I bring up all the files there. And for instance, if I if I list the contents of vendor bin, we see that I do have sale there. So it is ready to be run from the, the vendor bin folder uh, because it was installed along with the example application. So in this case, I don't really, I don't have to do anything else to use Laravel sale. Let me clear and get back. If it, Now from here, if I wanted to run Laravel sale, I can do that by uh, just typing dot slash vendor bin sale and issue the command up. Now, when you do that, it basically does a Docker compose up and runs Laravel on a Docker, in a Docker environment from this local, local uh, directory. So we'll wait for that to finish up. Okay, so that is up and running right now. Uh, and because of the fact that I ran uh, the Laravel sale up, uh, we, can, we can go over and look inside Docker and in Docker, we can see that I have uh, an example app running and I've got multiple other things running within this application as well. There's Selenium, there's Mailhog, MySQL, M Melis Search. There's also uh, a Redis here and then the Laravel app. All of those are running within that example app uh, in that stack. And also, if I look in the images, there's now a, a full list of images that were pulled down and used to create those containers. And the container is up and working right now. Because I ran it the way that I did using sail up, um, it, my terminal now acts as a, it, it's feeding back all of the traffic and everything that's going on. So if I, and you can see that occasionally it's, it's cycling through. If I go to localhost, and bring that up uh, in just a second, it'll bring it up and we'll see that the Laravel application is running and we're getting it served up in, in, the, in the page here. Now there's a better, more convenient way to run this. So let's go ahead and do that. For the moment, I'm going to hit Control C to exit out of the application. And now that is going to so stop the environment and, uh, and shut it all down. And right now, if we look in Docker, we can see that things are still running and they're in the process of shutting down. And so that way they're not actively running. When, I, when you exit out, it's gonna shut down the containers. Okay, so now it is exited. So now, some of the changes that I wanna make is I wanna make this a little bit easier to use. One of the easiest ways, of course, since I'm doing it inside the terminal, is to, instead of always having to type dot slash vendor slash bin slash sale, it would be nice if that were aliased. And so I'm going to go ahead and alias that in my, uh, my terminal. So by putting in this command, let me go ahead and clear and start back at the beginning here. I'm going to put in that command. So I'm aliasing sale and I'm telling it what to do in the bash script and how it's uh, supposed to use the vendor bin sale uh, location. So hit enter on that. So now that should alias the sale command. So if instead of using the vendor bin sale, now I should be able to do something like sale up. And it's basically issuing the same command. It's going to restart up the containers. And now I'm still going to be dropped at the terminal and it's still going to give me any log output. Uh, but it's a lot easier to remember to get it up and running. You don't have to worry about the vendor bin sale. So let me go ahead and hit uh, control C again to exit out of it. So let it stop running. Now, another thing that I want to do though, is instead of always having to keep my terminal open, once I have that environment up and working, it'd be a lot nicer to run it in detached mode. So that's what I'm gonna do. So now that, that's, now that it's stopped, I'm gonna clear, clear and go back to the, the, first, the beginning prompt. Uh, instead, I'm going to type or put in the command sale up, and I'm gonna put hyphen D to put it in detached mode. Now, once I do that, it's going to go through the same steps of kicking everything off, but then it drops me back to a command line where I'm able to function. However, if I go over to the containers, we see that they are in fact still running. So they're still running, and uh, in, but I'm in detached mode, so I'm not occupying my terminal. And I still have my terminal available for other things. 
Now, alternatively, if I want to shut this down, then instead of hitting Control C as I was doing before, I'm in detached mode. So I would have to issue the command sale stop and that would stop the containers. Okay, now that everything has stopped, I'm going to once again start it back up again, still in detached mode, and let it uh, bring everything back up because there's some other commands that I want to show you. Sale has some other handy commands that come along with the uh, command line utility, such as if I were to type sale php hyphen hyphen version, then it will give me back the version of PHP that I'm using inside the container. You can see here inside the container, I'm running PHP 8, 8.0.12. Now in Ubuntu, I don't have that. If I were to do uh, PHP hyphen V in PHP, you can see that inside the WSL2 environment, I'm running PHP 7.4.3. So we can see that uh, SAIL is giving me back the PHP information from within the containers created by SAIL. I could run pretty much any PHP command I wanted using SAIL and, and it would pass the command through to PHP. It would also make it easier for me to run Composer. So if I wanted to do something like SAIL, Composer, and for instance, I could do list and to give me a list of the composer commands or run any other composer command, it's, it's all right here. Uh, composer is available and sale is passing that through to me. So it does make it very convenient to be able to access PHP or composer to do other things from within the sale environment. Alternatively, I could use sale for other things as well. So for instance, if I wanted to find out the version of Node that I had installed, Node.js, I could do sale, node and do version of node and it would give me back the version of node uh, js that i'm currently running inside that environment as well which is 16.13.0 and i could issue other node commands or even npm commands if i wanted to do node package manager and install some different packages i could do that just the same if we wanted to run tests we could do a sail test and let it run our test for us and we can see here the results of the tests where the tests are two different tests and they both passed. Now, keep in mind, it does take a little bit longer to run commands because we are running them in Docker and the, the local files are all in the host system. So it does take a little bit of time, but it's not too terrible and it's pr pretty usable in most situations. You may need to adjust the way that you're doing things depending on your environment and how your application is set up, to, you know, and what speed that you really need, you know, in a development environment. But for most practical use cases, this is going to be sufficient. Something else to note is we also have the availability of the shell from within the containers. If I issue the command, let me clear my screen, if you issue the command sail shell, it will bring up the shell terminal inside the container. So then any commands that I'm issuing are inside the container and I'm able to function that way. If I exit out, it brings me back to my command prompt inside the WSL environment. And, but I could have run any commands I wanted to inside, uh, inside the shell of the container. It also gives availability of Tinker. So if I wanted to use Tinker, I could issue the command sale Tinker and, and any other subcommand of Tinker. So this was just a real quick video to get you up and working and hopefully experimenting with Laravel sale a little bit. Uh, the folks who requested me to do another Docker tutorial, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully all of you found this helpful. It's the easiest way to get a Docker application up and working using Laravel sale for a Laravel application inside a Docker container. And again, it doesn't really require a lot of Docker experience or know-how to do it. It's very easy to get up and working really quickly. I wish you the best of luck. Let me know how it goes for you. Leave a comment and let me know if you tried Laravel Sale and how you found the experience as well. I look forward to hearing from all of you. Uh, if you found this video helpful or if you found that it helped push you in the, in the direction to give that a try, give the video a like. So that way others in the community will know about the video and find it in, in the search. I really appreciate your help and hopefully I'll get to see you again in the next video. Thank you.